Hi folks, welcome to a new episode of Composing with Back and Cage. Today I'm going to talk about specialization, how to control different events in a score to place them in different points in space. So to do that, I'm going to use uh, my Max patch connected to a Reaper session where I have my uh, Ambisonic plugins loaded. I'm going to use the IEM uh, plugin suite for Ambisonics, and that should make things pretty easy to use once we have everything set up. So um, I also created, uh, as you can see here, a visualization of the uh, specialization that I've created. And it's a very simple visualization, but uh, it should give you an idea of how um, this whole thing works. So in this patch, I have a score with an example uh, the example is one of my uh, early piano pieces and it's uh, I chose it because it's very active in different registers and I'm going to um, have each octave to be mapped to a different object uh, in space. In this patch, I am generating the spatial information in real time using some jitter objects. And this will all be available in the patch that I'm sharing with my Patreons. I'm sending the um, uh, MIDI information, the MIDI pitch, velocity, and duration information to um, Reaper. And then in a separate uh, part of the patch, I'm generating the spatial data and sending it as CC values uh, to uh, the same uh, Reaper uh, session. If you go to the IEM plugin webpage, you can download the plugin bundle, and there is also uh, a whole bunch of explanations and uh, guide uh, to how to use these plugins. But today, I hope I'm gonna be able to clarify most of the uh, procedure here. I, I'm gonna have a few sound sources. And then I'm going to connect the, those to one ambisonic bus. And then that one ambisonic bus is going to uh, be routed either to the headphones or to the loudspeakers. So if you have a multi-channel loudspeaker setup, then you're going to choose the loudspeaker output. If you're just listening to uh, with headphones, then of course you're going to choose the headphones. Um, and that's a stereo. You can see how there are two arrows. It's a stereo output. But in order to listen, to really appreciate the specialization uh, for this stereo output, you do need to have headphones. So uh, if I go to the bottom of the page, I can download the uh, Ambisonic production template. And, um, and that will give me a good starting point. So here I have one of the templates, a pretty simple one. I have my headphones and I have my loudspeaker. Both the headphones output and the loudspeakers output I'm gonna, are gonna have some decoding. Um, so a decoder that will take the input uh, from the ambisonic bus and transform it either to a stereo um, headphones output or to a multi-channel uh, uh, speakers. 
So in my uh, ambisonic bus, I have to create some uh, um, some some tracks within the ambisonic bus folder track to uh, then send uh, all of my sources and do the encoding and all and the spatial um, automations and all that. So I can go ahead and create a new track, um, and then I want to put that in a in the um, in the folder track of the ambisonic bus and I want to start adding some effects to it. So the first one that I want to add is this stereo encoder. So this is going to uh, be responsible for taking the sound and putting it into space after I have installed the EEM, the IEM plugin suite, then I can uh, open a stereo encoder and I see how I have a um, an interface where I can um, start moving the sound in different directions um, and I have a azimuth angle an elevation angle also then roll and width in my writing window of the track I need to do uh, first of all change the number of channels per track and if I want to have a fifth um, level ambisonic, I can uh, select 36 uh, channels. If I go on in the um, uh, in the documentation of the uh, plugin suite, I can see how the first level ambisonic is a four channel, the second level is nine, third is 16, and um, when I get pretty detail with the fifth level ambisonic, uh, which requires for 36 channels for the track. The second effects I wanna add to my um, track, my ambisonic track, is a relearn plugin. The relearn plugin allows me to map um, different incoming messages, and that could be MIDI or OSC. Uh, to my track, or to my to the effects that I have on the track. So, if I uh, type in relearn uh, into my into my um, filter, then I will have my relearn um, plugin that I can then load, uh, reset to factory default, uh, and so now I have my uh, way of mapping different parameters to uh, to my track. And I want that to be in f before the stereo encoder because I'm gonna use the relearn to then control the stereo encoder. Let's just test uh, if, the, if my output, my MIDI output from Max is actually getting into Reaper. Uh, so here I have a uh, MIDI out where I can choose my uh, port. I'll choose port one, and um, this is done through my Loop MIDI uh, little app, which allows me to create virtual MIDI ports. And that's also I will put the link to that in the into in the description. Uh, so I can choose my MIDI output. Let's do port one. And then I can go to Reaper and um, I should check whether I have that port showing and I do. Uh, and then I should choose in my MIDI input. So I right click on the uh, record uh, icon in, in Reaper and then do input MIDI. And then let's do uh, port one and let's choose channel one and then I'm gonna send into the CC input the control change uh, input of the MIDI format a value uh, and I will prepend uh, the um, control change index record enable the track and then I'm going to select my port from my relearn the port that I want to use and I'm gonna add a mapping mapping and I'm gonna edit the mapping. Uh, the source is gonna be a CC uh, source, like I just chose on channel one, and the CC is gonna be 20, okay? 
And then um, what am I going to control? Well, I can control the uh, stereo encoder. So here I can choose either if I want to control another track, but here I want to control an effects. I want to control the stereo encoder. And of the stereo encoder, now I have all of the um, all of the parameters that I can control. And I want to control the azimuth angle. Okay, so uh, now I can first see if this works. And it does. All of my values are uh, that I'm sending in, since we're dealing with MIDI, there are going to be integers from 0 to 127. And um, I can I can add some sliding or some scaling in my relearn um, window, but um, this is what I'm getting. So I have to make sure that all of my outgoing messages from Max are going to be from 0 to 127, because anything else will be um, discarded. We're seeing the messages coming in, but are they being mapped to my um, uh, stereo encoder? And I can see how they are. So uh, given this simple setup, I can now um, send messages from Max to Reaper and have Reaper do the ambisonic work. I need to add a receive to my uh, ambisonic bus, and that's gonna be my track four, which again re uh, rename as channel one. Um, again, rename as channel one. Now, if I go to my uh, receive, I need to um, have a multi channel input for for the ambisonic bus to work properly so 1 to uh, 36 which is the number of tracks i have in my uh, spatial track and i can uh, deactivate actually the midi i want to have another effects on the track where i'm i'm doing the encoding of the ambisonic and that's going to be my instrument i want to i want to actually um have a synthesizer for instance like a the surge synthesizer. So I'm going to get my MIDI note. I'm going to produce some sound. Then the relearn will, will uh, map my uh, spatial uh, coordinate to my stereo encoder, and uh, and that that output will be then routed to my ambisonic bus. So um, to make sure that that happens, I already have my um, channel one track uh, mapped to uh, sent to my ambisonic bus. As you can see here, um, the output is um, going there. And, um, and then I want to um, add some other mapping to my track. So let's add two mappings. Uh, so I have here the azimuth angle, as I can see here but I can also have a uh, elevation and then my distance, which will be translated into gain. So um, for my, the channel is going to be one still, my CC is going to be 21. And these are parameters that I chose arbitrarily. Uh, and then uh, my, um, my CC uh, value is going to be mapped to my stereo encoder and to my elevation angle. Okay, and then I'm going to do the last mapping, which will be coming in uh, CC22. And instead of mapping it to the effects in this case, I, I'm actually going to map it to the track volume right here. So that's that for my uh, track. Um, set up and I can start testing it so um, I've tested it and it works uh, I, now I what I want to do is create more than one track I want to have uh, multiple tracks. I want to have actually uh, one track per octave. So I'm going to map 
uh, each octave to a different uh, spatial um, object. And then to do that, I can just duplicate the track. And I have to actually do some changes on the effects. So if I click on that and then I go to my relearn, I need to change the mappings. So the uh, MIDI control input is the same, but um, the channel is going to be two for this one. In this set patch, I'm just generating uh, a position in 3D space. So my coordinates here are going to be um, 3D coordinates with uh, X and Y and Z position that are continuously changing. What's required for me to have in the IEM uh, plugins is a um, it's a um, azimuth angle and an elevation angle. So these are both angular um, values that I need to extract. So to get the um, angular values uh, from a 3D uh, linear position, uh, I have to use inverse uh, trigonometric functions. I can use just uh, uh, arc cosine uh, of the, of the um, X position, and that will give me the angle and to get the elevation, I can use the arc sine uh, function to um, extract the angular value of the height of the object. Uh, and these are outputting values between zero and pi. So I can just scale the, um, the value from zero uh, to pi as an input to 0 to 127. And then uh, I'm using the whole vector, XYZ vector, and I'm doing, I'm doing a simple uh, Pythagorean uh, formula to extract the length of the vectors. In the next video, I'm going to assign my spatial information to each one of the events in my score. So in case I want to have a specific uh, and fixed um, values for the spatial information, I can just save it into a score and that will, uh, will allow me to replicate uh, whatever um, spatial choice I make. Stay tuned for next videos to explore more about uh, specialization. Feel free to check my Patreon page uh, if you haven't done so already. And uh, until the next time, take care. Thank you.